Hello, welcome everyone. Today I am so excited for this conversation with gold Olympic medalist Jamie Salé, who has been speaking out about what's taking place in the world right now and has had so much courage to do so. Let's see, I'm going to I'm going to bring her in right now. Beautiful. Jamie, hello. Oh. How are you doing? Oh, I'm great. How are you? I'm so good. I know that you're working right now with Theo Fleury. You have a full schedule. You're living life to the fullest. So I really appreciate you taking this time to chat. It's my pleasure. You know what? We're just, you can see I'm in like a bare kind of office here. We're just sort of getting started with our plans, our initial meetings of, uh, you know, what the future holds for our team, Canadians for Truth, Justice and Freedom. So yeah, we're excited. We're just, um, this is our first meeting today. So um, they're all excited that, of course, the more interviews we do, the, the better it is. So it's all good. I love it. And, and I've been listening to some of the other interviews you've, you've been doing and really moved, really moved. I was listening to the one with Kayla the other day. And um, let's just start off with a bang. Why don't you describe to everyone the courage it took to really, I, I know the, name, the word courage is thrown around a lot, but your process, your experience of going to believing that, you know, C, the pandemic, what's taking place is really s serious and scary. And then to the deeper truth of what really is scary. Yeah. So the first, I would say, you know, 10 months or so from March till about December of the initial pandemic, um, I was, you know, I was, my husband and I at the time were watching CNN and the news. And of course, everyone was scared. And we were all like doing our parts and wearing our masks and distancing and not going anywhere. You know, two weeks to flatten the curve. Right. So we did everything. We were, and then by, I would say that winter of 2021, um, so 2020, I can't even, the, the years, oh, it's crazy. This started in 2020, right? Yeah. Yeah. So... <laughs> It feels like it's been a decade and then also two months in the same way. Yeah, exactly. So, so 2020 I, winter. 2021. Um, yeah. Anyway, I, the dates aren't really that important, except that it was the first 10 months where I was following all the rules. Then I started to feel like something was just not right. Um, it wasn't it doesn't feel right. Like I can't hug my family. We can't do this. We, and I'm thinking everyone, there's a lot of people around me that were just going about life like normal because they were saying that this is, they weren't scared of it. And they were, I'm going, how can you not be scared of this? This is very serious. And um, so, but what happened was that, ja that coming January, I was sharing a, a Swedish graph. Oh, I'm so sorry. My phone just fell. That's all good. I was sharing a graph with my friend from Ontario and she's going, well, my graph's completely different. And she was just trying to make me very gently aware that there was a completely different narrative going on over on the, over here. And I was like, where are you getting this information? Because it's not from Google. And she goes, Oh, Jamie, there's a whole nother, all these other sites that are telling truth. And I said, what do you mean? We're not being told the truth. And so I was quite disturbed. I was upset. And then that was the end of it. I was like, what is going on? So all last year I was waking up and it, I was working as a neuroscience coach. My career was about to take off with two other partners, doing very, very well, helping retired athletes transition from sport to, to life. And um, I just got uh, really disturbed and rattled. My belief system was shaken hugely from awakening to a lot of truth. And so I actually stopped working. I was sharing very passionately with my family, friends, uh, my husband at the time, and nobody wanted to hear it. In fact, I was completely like, I don't have time to watch these videos. I don't have time for that. Jamie, um, this is crazy. I was told that I was down a bad path. And I thought, well, you know what? These people over here that are speaking out and trying to make us aware of what they're, they're totally aware of have everything to lose. And I've already sort of been that person that was, um, I don't know, I'm not really a rebel or anything in my life, but I've never really, I've never watched the news. Um, and I always, I've watched my fa some of my family members and friends in my life, you know, have a health problem and then they get put on medication and then that medication makes them sicker and then they get put on another medication. And so I've kind of always been questioning the healthcare system. 
going, what are they, do what are we doing to humans? Like what, we're making them sicker instead of helping, you know, cure the, the actual cause and not treat the symptom. So waking up to all that was not so much the shock. It was what the, what you said in the beginning, what the real pandemic is. And that was the mass, like the world uh, economic forms agenda for all of us. And that was where I was trying to share to people. And that's what freaked a lot of my family out was that um, now I'm down this dark path with really dark people and this isn't going to end well for you. And, and I thought, well, okay, they, they don't even hide this. They're telling us in movies. They're actually telling us in the media. They're, they're putting stuff out there. But enough pe but people are they're hearing it and they're like, nah, that can't be true. Or that's, I don't know what people are thinking, but I, I became very aware of it. And then, you know, the conspiracy side of it was like, well, just wait a couple months, right? And then the conspiracy comes true. And here we are. So I lost uh, my husband and I, unfortunately, our marriage was um, struggling as it was. So that was sort of the beginning of the end. Then my son um, went to school and was with me in all this and then got coerced into getting it because he can't do this. He can't do that. He can't do this. He can't do that. I tried to make people aware. Is that not a red flag that it's get the jab or else get it or else you lose this. You can't go to dinner. You can't get on a plane. You can't do this. Whenever in history has this ever been a thing? Oh, well, we've never been in a pandemic before like this. And I said, yes, but you're not aware of what's really going on behind the scenes. So there was this battle with my exes and with family and with friends. And, and I got a phone call one day, uh, well, not a phone call, a voice text from my group, my best friend group saying that they can't be around me because I'm now uh, around a white supremacist community and I'm a risk to be around because I chose not to get the job. And uh, so I was like, wow, so I've lost, you know, my husband, <laughs> which, again, it wasn't this that made that happen. But it was just, you know, kind of like I, when you don't have your partner with you, it's really, really difficult. My family's kind of freaking out. My best friends don't want to be around me. My son's now mad at me and upset with me because I'm fighting for his auto bodily autonomy and sovereignty. And yeah, so here I am a year later and I'm sure hoping that things come out really soon, but still fighting for everybody. Um, meanwhile, they still think I'm crazy. I've been called every name in the book, uh, a lunatic, a uh, bigot, uh, you know, I'm supporting a terrorist act. I'm going, <laughs> so it was January of this past year, 2022, um, where I was sitting in my house and I got this download. I just like, it's go time. You need to speak out. And I think part of it was that the convoy really, uh, it really lifted me up. And I know for some people it did nothing, but for a lot of us, it united us because we got to see how many other people were like-minded and who were seeing this. So I had goosebumps. I had tears. I was super emotional. I was grateful. I even did my local, you know, convoy in Edmonton. I was part of all of that. I felt so patriotic. I haven't felt that patriotic in a long time. Um, yeah. And so since then lots has happened, but that was part of my awakening, but I, it sure rattled me, Nicole. Like I, my whole belief system got completely uh, turned upside down because everything we've believed um, that I've learned now is a lie, like everything. So, okay, this is a question I've been asking people because I've had similar journey as you and I had that it's go time feeling Jan mm -hmm. or June 2020. And I worked in media, I worked at Nate as an instructor and I started speaking out and of course lost my job, lost friends, yep. all of the things. Yep. And people see us sitting here and go, look at what you've lost. Why would you continue to do this? I get that too. What, what do you tell? Cause, cause you and I both know it's worth it. There's no question. Not but how can you express that to somebody who doesn't understand what you gain? Well, you know what I think, sorry, I'm trying to move my chair up here. Just one second. Okay. Oh, there we go. So I get a lot of that. I get people going, you've, you've, uh, you're ruining your reputation. You are, and my, my ex just told me that a while ago. He's like, what are you going to do with your life? You've ruined everything. Nobody, everybody's written you off and blah, 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 blah. And I've had people on Instagram tell me that. And it's like, you know what? I'm actually creating my authentic reputation, I believe. And Kaylor said that to me and I love that. And I'm going to use it forever now. But I know that what I see is true. And we all know that once you see it, you can't unsee it. So we know that this is, and look around the world, like everything we're following, everybody that is awake is 
fighting for their freedoms and trying to take down their government. So for me, because I truly have discernment around what I believe to be true, I go, I don't, right now I can't care about what people think of me. And of course the skating world is, you know, talking about me and they think I'm a horrible person or whatever. Like there's a lot of that out there, but I go, well, your awakening is coming. And unfortunately, because of the way that they're ridiculing and shaming the rest of us, it's not going to be pretty. And I send them love and light. And that's really what I wish for everybody. But it's like, I'm sorry. You know what? I, I've, I don't know what else it's going to take to get you to see this. Because if we didn't have people fighting, I can't even imagine what we'd be led down to right now. Like, like it's just so, to us that see it, it's like, how, how obvious is it that you, I can't, get, I can't understand how they can't see it. <laughs> I know. And once I'm just, I'm, I thought of this while you were saying this, once you see, once you see it, yeah, you can't even get the quote unquote comfort from the pretending anymore. Like it's, so it's not even like a choice of like, I can just go and blue pill again or whatever. And I'm, I'm not trying oh. to put people down. I was asleep as well. So it's me, not. Me too. Yeah. yeah. It's just the comfort's gone. Now truth it's, it's raw. It's really raw. And like I like you said even and to any of your listeners right now I it's not that we don't want to be around people that we love and care about that are sleeping it's that it's difficult because they're having conversations around all of their news that they're following being normal and truthful and I, I can't listen to those conversations for me it's a very low vibration because it's fear-based this was what this whole agenda is about, was creating division and fear, because when we're in a fear state, they can control us. Yeah. And, and what do you feel about stepping into those conversations? How do you navigate that in a way that maybe does, op like your friend who woke you up? Wh yeah. How do you think that's a good way to navigate those conversations or to help people without condemning them? Yeah, no, we on our side too, and I hate that there's sides. I don't like the side <laughs> division, but unfortunately they did create division and we've had, we've got this awake and the unawake. So when it comes to trying to talk to people that are sleeping, I think just being very gentle, ask questions and asking a question in the way that it makes them think about something. And then with, if you can have your facts right there with you, have you checked on, the, on their website? They're not hiding what the agenda is. Then you can show them even like um, the specific data that's out on vaccines. You can show them specific data that's out on um, uh, like the, all these world renowned doctors, I guess if you, go, but that's the problem. When I've shared things with them that are um, from Dr. David Martin, Dr. Northrup, Dr. Tenpenny, like all these doctors that are speaking out on our truth or yeah. side. Now, if you Google them, because this is what, the sleepers do they google them and now they're vilified right so they're like oh well they're they're anti-vaxxers they're anti this they're anti that so you almost can't win but it's just really a calm conversation i guess of asking questions making them think a little bit differently like hey guys you know what we were told that if we got these vaccines or these jabs that we wouldn't get covid and you've gotten COVID twice or once or whatever, like have that conversation. Then they change the narrative to, oh, it doesn't stop you from getting it, but you're gonna be less sick. Well, I know people that have been jabbed that have been really sick and needed medication and they've never been that sick in their life. So I think just making them aware of like, you were told this, then it was this, then it was this, and then it was this, it just keeps changing. So it makes them go, hmm, yeah. Like, but again, we were also told Nicole, to not spend our energy waking anybody up anymore. This was a while ago. And because it's not our job, the mm. information is all out there. It is all out there. But people that are still asleep are, are choosing to not want to see it. Okay, this is great. So then how do we move into solution based? Because I was chatting with Kristen Nagel the other day. It's like, how do we move in from the fight in a certain way of trying to change people's minds? Because that that could be a losing battle versus what are solution based actions? What does that look like? Well, I think just continue to speak out, continue to share and not sharing like I heard kind of stuff or gossipy things, but sharing 
like the, we have a lot of doctors and scientists on our side too that are, are putting stuff out daily on Telegram and on Twitter and everywhere, just keep sharing. And what I want to do is stay in, in a love frequency. I want to be able to be helpful to someone that is kind of waking up. And I also want to send love to somebody who's sleeping that isn't getting it because, and I pray, I pray every day for people to wake up to start seeing this. We also, like, I have to accept the fact that my family or some of my, you know, my loved ones aren't going to see this. They may never see it when, even when it comes out. I truly believe we're, we're near the end of this in that stuff's about to be exposed big time. Like, I think my guess is this month, next month, whenever, but I feel like we're really, really close to things getting really globally exposed because we can't keep going like this. We can't. And, you know, that's just maybe what I want to believe too. But I think the important thing right now is just to stay positive, keep your vibration high, uh, keep sharing, keep and share within your community of, that are awake too. Like for me, it's not necessarily about waking anyone else up. It's about all of us uniting, keep uniting with other groups, other people like you and I are today. Keep this going because more united we are, the stronger we are. And, um, you know, I believe at some point here, there's a breaking point. I I have to agree with you. And I think it's already happening because I've received some messages from people being like, hey, like, I thought this. Now I think this. Your story is similar. My yeah. story is similar. I think just going back, if people don't really understand how the media works, it's hard to get to the next level. Because when you're talking about the doctors and stuff, it's like, there's so many experts speaking out on this who are top of their field. Who are top of their field. But again, if you share this, people just go, because if you Google, even, I think if you even Google me, someone said that I'm now called a conspiracy theorist or something. I go like, that's been the problem with this whole internet stuff and people speaking out is that right away they change your status. They, they go and change everything about all these doctors and scientists and virologists. They, they go and call them anti-vaxxers and anti or conspiracy theorists and this and this. And like, it's just, it's, re, it's been so difficult to share this stuff because they go right away. I want, I want, I want to um, do my fact checking, you know, the fact checking. Well, everything that you Google right now is all about, it's owned by big pharma, big tech. They're all connected and they only tell us what they want us to know. So can you imagine this bill that Trudeau is now signed that is going to censor all of us? We can't share anything. We can't post any, like I got, I posted something the other day on um, Facebook from Dell Big Tree. And I, I got a 24 hour ban and that was my first one. But like every friend of mine has been banned for two weeks, for a month. Like everyone's just getting banned for putting up truth. And everyone, so I asked my family, I said, why do you think there's so much censorship around this? Like I'm telling you, when you find out how much censorship there's been, you're going to be a bit sick because you've been, you, a lot of truth has been kept from you. The truth has been kept from you. And you know what, in the beginning I was told, well, it's us because you know if we're told too many things that are misinformation i'm like when again ever in history have we censored people to this degree censored like we can't post anything hardly right that i mean we do but we get banned yeah we get it and i'm just like hello why are but they why are they suspending all of us but then there's other things on the internet that don't get censored right yeah, like, so you know that it's a choice. It's it's targeted. Well, uh, I forget his name, but it starts with a T from the WEF. He said, he, he actually put out a comment saying that we have to censor the internet because there's so much misinformation, disinformation out there. Like all these uh, these words that they've put out are like, they've created this to, to make truthers look bad. Yeah. And I'm just like, but again, I mean, once you see it, you can't unsee it. It's true. And we get things wrong as well. Let's let's but this is where oh, yeah. it's like government. It's like, this is why we want individuals to have the information and to be able to practice discernment, not just like choosing for them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, I, I completely admit, like, there's been things even, you know, um, what I'm finding, actually, I was just talking to my team today, I'm like, very confused, because you I post you post something that you think is happening or is going on, but then you find out that that person that spoke in that video is not supposedly not a good person, but everyone in this truth or movement too is kind of like talking about each other and trying to, you know, we're trying to, trying to pull each other down. And I'm going, 
what is going on and why are we not uniting as a truther movement as well? And we're not going to, we're not going to do well if we all keep fighting each other. So that's really frustrating. And I, I'm not saying I'm posting misinformation per se, but maybe I don't know that story of that person that I, he did the person that talked to me. I don't know his story, but what he's saying to me sounds really darn good. Um, you know, I even posted a while ago a picture of uh, Hitler and Trudeau, and on the side was uh, the comparisons of where of what the plan their plans were, and are. And Trudeau's plan uh, was exactly the same as Hitler's, the way he started, and that mm -hmm. was close. It wasn't saying that Trudeau is Hitler. It was saying this is their plan, and this is how it started for Hitler, and this is what he's doing, and it's paralleling. It's yeah. identical dividing people it was creating an uh, an id like it was identical and people lost their shit on me i was like oh my gosh you guys you can't even see that it's the same agenda but i took it down because i didn't want to offend people i wasn't saying that you know we're all getting hauled off to concentration camps but that was the plan that was the I, that was the exact plan was that anyone who wasn't going to comply was going to be taken away and people go, that's crazy, Jamie. I'm like, well, look, you guys, I couldn't go to a restaurant. I couldn't, I can't, barely can still get on an airplane, right? I, can, I can't go to the US, I can go across Canada now, but you know, we're still wearing masks. We're still, you know, it's just ridiculous. I go, how are you not seeing this? How do you deal with the personal attacks and the hate? Cause I know there's lots of people. <laughs> okay. You know what? Go for it. I've had it my whole life. At this point now, I know I'm on the right side of this. I know that what I'm doing isn't, uh, I'm doing it for the greater good. I'm doing it for humanity. And one day I know they'll see this, but not to be disrespectful, but I don't listen to the noise. And of course you're gonna get the odd, I was 90% getting hate on Twitter. And now I'm like 95% positive, they're with me. The odd person you know, likes to send, but I, I know that that's trauma. When somebody takes the time to actually bully you and, and send you hate messages, that's their, that's their own trauma. That's not my, that's not my stuff because I follow people. I follow people in the past that have posted things that I don't agree with, but I just keep going. You know, I keep scrolling. I don't sit there and go, what is wrong with you? And you're meh, 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 meh. like, I don't shame them for anything. I just go, okay, you do you. I let people be. So, you know what? My thick, my skin's gotten thicker. Um, and not that I'm, my heart's getting, you know, blocked or anything. I'm still very heart centered person, but you can't listen to the noise. You're going to get people that are going to try to take you down because what you're doing by speaking truth is you're rattling their belief system. You're completely changing their, their thoughts on, 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 on all of this. Like we've all been living in the matrix and they don't want to be taken out of the matrix. They don't. And I didn't either. And so I can speak from that perspective. I was completely asleep. Well, completely. I was mostly asleep through this beginning of it too. Um, and this hasn't just been going on for two years. This has been an agenda that's been, been in play for a while. This last two years is just sort of their end game, the end of uh, the beginning of the end for them. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't know. I just, I can't, I can't care about the, that small percentage anymore. That's wanting to shame people because I know that the rest of us, if we come from love, you know what, we're, we're gonna unite. We're gonna continue to uh, build our, our fringe majority. We're not a minority. And we're gonna take, we're gonna end this. I do believe that. So how do you, how do you check yourself when, when you've changed your minds, when we, we're always going that way, to know you're on the right side or to have that confidence? Um, just my, who I surround myself with, I guess. Um, I think anybody that you have a conversation with that sees what you see, um, you know, and I think at this point, everyone keeps like, we keep sharing information and, and videos and stuff. And I go, guys, you know what? At this point, I feel like I know enough. I don't even really care to watch anything anymore. I just want to stay connected with my tribe. I call them our tribes. I'm getting messages daily on Instagram, Twitter, uh, even Facebook, just, thanking me, but also saying, telling me their story. Um, I connect with them. I talk with them. Some of them I've even had phone conversations with because we have the identical story. Like it's just, this has been so powerful. You know, it's really difficult and sad in some ways, many ways and disgusting in many ways, but also there's the gift in this. And I've, I've already been able to see some of the gifts and that is connecting with 
incredible people like you who are also, I don't like the word fighting or war or whatever, but we are in a spiritual war right now. And we are standing up for the truth because we know the truth. And I just believe that God wins and the truth wins. So I'm not going to stop until we do. Oh, I love that so much. Um, you, you were a life coach as well, and you speak about trauma. What do you think, what role does trauma play in what's taking place right now, in your opinion? So, and again, I work with Theo Fleury, who's had trauma also in his life, and we both have talked about our healing process. So that is really powerful. I spent my whole year working with healers, different type of healers, from osteopath to craniosacral to a medium. Um, I've had hypnotherapy. I've had all kinds of treatments to help me with my trauma. Um, when we have trauma, we get triggered, right? So for example, even still today, if I'm noticing that something's triggering me, I go, okay, what is it in me right now? It's not about that person triggering me. It's what is it in me right now that's making me react to this comment or this, this person or this situation? Um, there's what I, and it's not a, a disrespect or, um, you know, I'm not saying that absolutely everybody's got horrible trauma, but I believe that we've all been traumatized from our childhoods and our adolescent years. And even society has been traumatizing us, whether we've, and, and some of it's very subtle, um, you know, and now we're dealing with all this gender stuff. And like, there's just so much that's all a part of their agenda that has a slowly kind of created this uh, trauma, if you will, through, through everybody, within everybody. And I, my biggest thing though, Nicole, was when, was a noticing within myself, like when I'm getting triggered, I'm getting way less triggered now because I continue to work on my, my stuff, right? Um, so I, I, that was the thing that I noticed with my clients, why they weren't able to achieve. Some of, some of them were like, I can't even achieve like my, my lowest, uh, least important goals. And I'm really struggling with this. And I got really curious as to why. And then I realized that when we have these traumas as, um, from childhood, and trauma doesn't have to be that you were sexually or physically abused. It could be just even the sense of abandonment. Um, maybe I, someone in kindergarten told you that you suck, you know, or you're no good, or you're not pretty, or you're whatever, and that stuck. So it buries in our subconscious brain. And then what happens is you develop this belief system about yourself, that you're not worthy, you're not good enough, you're not lovable. And so I was, I used skating as a, my coping mechanism it was like my it was like my outlet to feel important and feel loved and feel this that I was I was feeling that void yes I was talented and I worked hard and I didn't quit but as I became an adult it was showing up in my life and I'm going well what is this all about what is this all and so then I realized well it's because deep down in my back you know subconscious I truly believe I'm not good enough I'm not worthy because I would get so offended when people would talk bad about me you know what? It's not, yeah, like it's not, and I, I, I still care about what people think, but really you can't care about what people think of you. You can't because I don't care how great you are. Someone out there is going to not like you. doesn't matter what you say or do. Right. So that was a huge learning curve for me. And so the trauma work was really challenging. Like I was like, Oh, this is uncomfortable. But in, like in skating, I learned to get comfortable being uncomfortable. And, um, you know, it doesn't have to be like that forever, but you got to do the work. Otherwise you take your, your caca, <laughs> you know, you take it here to the next thing. And you know what, that's why, you know, second marriage is over. And I'm like, instead of pointing blame, I take responsibility and accountability for my own actions. What have I learned? What do I need to do? What do I need to heal? Can't worry about what everyone else is doing. Yeah, and I've had an addiction to that fixer mentality. I'm going to fix oh. everyone else. Yeah. yeah, we can fix everybody. Yeah, so, yeah. I'm done fixing. <laughs> Work on you. That's it. Yeah. Totally. Oh, so powerful. Okay, one last question. Um, maybe two. Because um, I know you have so much to do with you. Hi. Hey. <laughs> oh, no, he's listening to me. Is that Theo? Yeah, that's Theo. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, what were some of the transferable skills, if there were any, from your career as an athlete that have actually helped you now with speaking out? Oh, okay. Well, I'm, I, I've, told, I've said this in all my interviews. Um, 
I don't really know what the one thing or you asked me what uh, tr did you say what traits transfer transferable skills or traits yeah. Or yeah so what happened for me was I was like I said I, I woke up but then I found people that I knew that were also awake Theo was a big one because I knew him from skating in Battle of the Blades but I also was a Flames fan growing up and I just I connected with him I knew him so I went oh my gosh Theo was awake so then you start connecting with other people that are speaking out and seeing it so I was following him for a while I was following Kaler I was following all these other people that were awake and I'm going, okay, okay. Like, but I needed to do the healing first because that was in January when I got the download going, it's go time. It was, it's time to speak out. You need to, you know, stand up and show other people that you're with them. And that's to me what this is really about. It's, it's about supporting each other so that we don't feel alone because we know we're not alone, but it's a lonely feeling. Right. So I would say like, you know, um, persevering, like learning how to persevere, learning how, because I've messaged Theo, I, I think probably 50 times already in the last six months. How do you do this? Because I just, like there's been days where I don't even want to be here anymore or I want to throw in the towel. I don't want to post anything. I just want to get off because I'm getting attacked or whatever. And he's like this, Jamie, it's either that or we die. Like that was the plan. And that really resonated with me because I thought like it was kind of like in skating and it's a bit of a different scenario, but I've been through scandal and it was about taking the high road um, becoming, being your authentic self, being true to who you are, speaking your truth, um, and just coming from love. And that's what I learned in my skating scandal, but also, you know, um, that we can't quit. Like if we quit, we're duped. So I'm not a quitter. Um, and I think that, again, I learned that from my sport. Um, but I'm also, I love people and I want to help people. And so I can't maybe wake more people up, but what I can do is support the people who are wake, who are waking up and the ones that are awake and stay connected to them and share the love and continue to be united. Oh, I got goosebumps. So yeah, I don't know. Am I missing something that we've learned through sport? Well, look what we're doing here. Look what we're doing yeah, here. We're, we're creating a, um, we have this beautiful building that we're in right now. It's, uh, it's in the process of becoming a news studio for the North American News Network that we're creating. Um, I'm learning as I go here, it's our initial meeting, so I will be able to fill you all in later, but um, it's really, really exciting. There's a lot of Americans that are with us as well. And, um, you know, it's so funny because I remember when I was waking up, I was trying to share that this was global. And everyone around me was going, you think that this whole thing is like the whole world is lying and the whole the governments around the world are lying. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> I'm just trying to. Yes. So here we are, you know, watching all this play out. And it's like, OK, you're choosing not to see it. But you know what? Well, you don't. It doesn't actually take a lot. You just need a people at the top and then a bunch of people who are too afraid. Yeah. Hey, I don't. Yeah afraid Nicole because the hard part is like I know people that go if I speak out I lose everything and I go that it's just tough for me to sit there and go but 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 because I get it like you're, you're trying to keep food on the table for your family or you lose your whole some people don't have that uh, it's courage to me is being afraid and doing it anyway I've done that my whole life but it was also in the beginning like I explained to you it was like survival mode for me so it was like it was either I do that or you're done like I was done skating because everybody wrote me off. And so, you know, this is the same thing now. It's like you either fight for this or because at this point, I've pretty much lost everything in my old world anyway. And I hate talking like that because I don't see it as a loss. I see it as transitioning. But I mean, besides the skating world and other people talking bad about me, I go like, I know that they're going to be told the truth one day and they're all going to be sitting there going, whoa, Jamie knew this. Um, I don't, I don't even care to get apologies cause it's not what I'm doing this for, but, um, yeah, I just, yeah, I just, uh, sometimes I feel kind of speechless as to like what my traits are. I, I don't know. I'm just, I don't, I don't want to quit. And, and again, you, <laughs> there was a sacrifice that happened with your whole life, literally for the truth. Yeah. So before it was. I never saw it as sacrificing because I loved it just like I love this. 
Um, but I had no social life. I didn't have a lot of friends. I was because I chose skating and I was busy and I couldn't go to the parties. I wasn't doing what everyone else was doing, you know, but that was what I chose. And so now I'm choosing to fight for freedom and I've lost some people. Oh, well, I'm finding my tribe. Hey, these people who are with us are freaking amazing. Like I'm telling you, I've met some really awesome people and I'm so grateful so grateful and it's not to say that my my old friends or my family aren't amazing but i'm focusing right now on the people who are with us who are seeing this who are being loving who are you know telling the truth sharing the truth that's all i care about that's where i'm putting my energy because that's i'm visualizing the world that i want for myself for my daughter my son for my family and that's what we all need to be doing is start visualizing what you want your world to look like. It is not this that we're living right now. I can tell you that for free. It is not. <laughs> it is not this. And and how, this is the last question. I know you, you guys have stuff to do, but the quality of your connections, because people are afraid to lose everything or to appear to lose everything yeah. because they, they want to belong. But well, how, what are the qualities of the connections that you have now? You are going to lose people. But then I've also been told maybe they were there to, to lose. And I hate, like, my best friend group was 14 years of, like, we were sister wives. Like, we were tight. And I, I got told I can't be around you anymore. Well, I hate to say it like this, but maybe they, that wasn't a true friendship. And I'm sitting, I had a hard time accepting that because this was, like, literally, we were like this. So what do you mean they weren't there? They weren't really my real friend. Well, okay, well, they just dump you because you're not getting a vaccine that you believe, you believe to not be good? Like... That's my belief. I didn't tell them anything horrible. I just said, I don't want to get this. And here's some information. You should really look into this. So again, just not focusing on what you're going to lose, but what you're going to gain. And the people that are um, like, I, I've met so many awesome characters, like p connecting people to other people. Um, you know, you're, you're going to create opportunities for yourself. You have no idea speaking with, a truth or community what what's in store for you like of greatness because we're, we're doing God's work I truly believe that and when you're doing God's work I think that's exactly um, you know it's going to align you with incredible opportunities incredible people and incredible results that's what I believe oh this is such a great conversation thank you so much Jamie is there anything else you want to say uh, you know what? I just stay strong, everybody, and, um, you know, keep the faith. Pray for your loved ones, uh, but visualize. Keep visualizing and writing down exactly what you want moving forward. And uh, I'm here for everybody. Theo's here for everybody. Um, you know what? Just, yeah. Okay. He wants to wave one more time. <laughs> yes. Power. And, yeah, power. Stand in your truth. Stand in your truth and the truth. So, Love you all. Love you guys. Thank you so much. And we'll talk soon. Thanks, Nicole. See ya. Bye.